Begin to see harvest like you've never seen before as Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons teach you how everything you need is in the Garden of Eden. Next on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Pastor George is back with me today, and we're having a good time talking about prosperity. We're talking about our prosperity, mm -hmm. your prosperity, mm -hmm. and how God wants us to live in the blessing and not the curse. <clears throat> That's right. He wants us to live in that place of being blessed. We're blessed coming in. We're blessed going right. out. We're blessed in the city. Yes, we're blessed the in the time. field. Everything we set our hands to is blessed. That's right. Now, what I just said to you, all of those are words that are in the Word of God that He desires so much for us to confess yes. and to declare what belongs to us, what belongs to us in Him. And people don't realize they need, they need to say it first and then they'll see it. Jesus bore the curse for us. He did. But we have he to, He won't force it on you. We have to no. accept yeah. that with our words yeah. and our believing. And we have to get that kind of faith out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, it's worth the effort, I'm telling you. I remember when I was under the curse <laughs> and yeah. poverty was there and you didn't have what you needed and not that way anymore. That's right. That's not that way. And Praise God. the blessing looks like the Garden of Eden. It, it produces a Garden of Eden effect in our lives Amen. that we are to carry on exactly what God spoke to Adam and Eve in the Garden. He wants us to carry that on. I've heard Brother Copeland say this before about the Garden of Eden. We are to take the Garden of Eden and spread it all over the world. Amen. Everywhere we go, everybody we come in contact with, wherever we live, we talk, we've been talking about on these broadcasts, um, cities uh, that have been hit by poverty and hit by crime mm -hmm. and how the blessing can turn that city around. Right. The blessing will turn it around to speak over cities and declare the word of the living God over it. Amen. And in, in the same way you can do that over a city, we must do that over our own That's lives. True. Dump so, the trash out. <laughs> get rid of the trash. That's right. Dump the trash out. I was thinking about this, Gloria, before we started the broadcast today. In just in talking about the effect, the blessing effect, and the Garden of Eden effect, when I first came to Fort Worth, uh, Terry brought me here from ORU, and I came here. It was it was um, at the end of 1975. Uh, it was during the Christmas break, and she brought me home to meet her family. Oh, boy. So during this Christmas break, she took me to the downtown Fort Worth area. And at that time, downtown Fort Worth was like a ghost town. Hmm. It was, it, it, people just didn't go downtown. She even told me that. She said, now, I'm going to take you downtown, but people really don't come down here because the downtown area and the area surrounding the downtown Fort Worth area, they were, they were pretty hard to hit yeah. with poverty and crime. It just wasn't the place to go. And as the years have gone by, I have watched the city of Fort Worth transformed. Oh, if, you go down to, if you go downtown to Fort Worth, and it really, the Believers Convention, I just thought of this. I just thought of this. We started the Believers Convention um, in 1980, downtown. And Gloria, uh, in, in 2020, we celebrate 40 years wow. of the Believers Convention in downtown Fort Worth. And we have had that convention downtown faithfully every year over the last 40 years. And this just hit me. I believe that we have had an effect on the city of Fort Worth. Because and going being down there year after year after year, it's completely changed. If you go down to downtown Fort Worth, it is teeming with people. People are on the sidewalks. They're going down there. There are places that have been created for people to come and eat and yeah. and to. I mean, it's just amazing the the change that has taken place from the time I saw it in 1975 to where we are today. Yeah. It is, and it's rated one of the top cities in the United States. People- well, Think about it now, how every year the city of Fort Worth mm -hmm. has hosted 
allowed us to come, mm -hmm. use the facilities that we use, the, the uh, big places where yes. you have meetings. Yes. They've welcomed us. Yes. And we've <clears throat> preached the word there. Yep. And uh, we yep. have people come in from all over the world. And it's, just people come in off the streets. That's right. We are the biggest convention the city of Fort Worth has. Praise God. We are on the top of the list. And what I see as I'm talking to you about this, what I see is that this ministry has made the difference in the city of Fort Worth. I believe that. I believe that changes have come because of that. And if you okay. go down to the downtown area and it's, it's literally spread, the Garden of Eden, and if I may be so bold as to say that, it really has turned to a Garden of Eden because it's, it's a friendly place. Mm -hmm. It's a family friendly place for people to go down there. When I first went down in 1975, there was no one on the streets. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a ghost town. There's nobody down here. <laughs> and it's completely different yeah, it today. Is. And it has spread the blessing the blessing has spread out into the outer parts of the city that there are places now in the city of Fort Worth and the outskirts of it that a few years ago, you wouldn't go down there. You wouldn't dare go down there. Today, they've completely renovated it. Right. They've got apartment buildings, they have restaurants, they have theaters, and you just keep seeing this renovation take place. I'm saying all of that to say this, that is the effect of the blessing of the Lord in our lives. Mm -hmm. It changes everything. It transforms it, it everything. It transforms, refurbishes, <clears throat> resupplies. Yeah, it does. It, the, the city of Fort Worth has been, has been restored. Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of the blessing of the Lord, to be fruitful, multiply, yeah. uh, restore. Yeah, that's right. Restore and to subdue. Anyway, that's an illustration, Gloria, good, of what, what the blessing will do in our lives. It'll completely restore and refurbish and renovate amen. whatever needs to be changed yes, and renovated amen. in our if lives. We'll, if we'll go for it. If we'll, we'll go for it. We'll if we'll go for it. that. A couple of years ago when we stepped into the position uh, of, of CEO in the ministry, uh, one of the things that Terry and I did was we started taking a look at the property and how we can fix up this and fix up that. And that needed to be painted. That needed to be renovated. That needed to be done. And so we've been doing that. And then where the landscape is in, landscaping is concerned, you know, bringing flowers around the church and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we've actually had people tell us as they drive onto the property that may have not been here in a while, they'll go, there's something different about this place. There's Praise something, God. there's something about this place. Well, it's the blessing. Yes, amen. It can be that way at your house. That's or right. Your city. That's right. Glory to God. Absolutely. Absolutely, Gloria. Your life, so your that's, body. That's what you and I have been talking about. Praise God. And I'll, I'll read something. Let me read a testimony to you um, about the blessing of okay. the Lord. Um, this, this lady writes, this is Deborah, and she said, I've been immersing myself in the Word of God for four years now. Praise God. I especially love Miss Gloria and George, George's prosperity messages. Aww. I've learned so much, and I'm no longer afraid of what the future might hold. I've learned to trust God in all things. My daughter has been attending university for the past four years. She'll be graduating soon. My husband and I have put her through college for the past four years debt free. Praise God. When I look back, I cannot understand how it was possible, <laughs> but I know that I live in the blessing. Praise God. There it is. Isn't that good? The, and she said, the Lord has provided more than enough. I've declared out, lo out loud for the fast, past four years, my daughter's tuition is paid in Praise full. God. And then she writes, my father has provided. Praise God. Good word. Gloria, that's a demonstration yeah, of the blessing is. of the Lord. It is. That's a demonstration of the Garden of Eden in our lives. Praise God. And in this broadcast, if you take a look at your notes, Gloria and I have been looking at Deuteronomy 28. And Deuteronomy 28 is a perfect picture of what the blessing is. It's the blessing of Abraham. Yeah. And it is a picture of what the blessing is in our lives. So we've read through scriptures and we'll begin here with Deuteronomy 28:11. And it says in the Amplified Translation, well, actually, let me read it to you from Crackle my Bible. Um, in Deuteronomy 28, 11, and the Lord shall make you plenteous 
in goods. You know, in the Garden of Eden, there was plenty. There was no lack. Well, it says here, the blessing produces plenteousness in goods. In the fruit of your body, the fruit of your cattle, the fruit of your ground, and the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. I like the amplified translation of that scripture, Gloria. It says, and you've got that on your notes, mm -hmm. and the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. More than enough. Woo, that excites me. Mm -hmm. What was that the first one you read? What was it from? <clears throat> That's King James. The oh, first King one James. I read was okay. King James. He'll make you plenteous, plenteous in, goods. in goods. Well, this one, he'll make you have a surplus of prosperity. And in the Garden of Eden, there was never lack. There was more than enough. There was always enough supply for everything that they needed, yeah. everything that needed to take place. And that's what we live in. That's what we're living in is the blessing of the Lord. My confession and my declaration over this ministry is that we have all, we always have more than enough to do everything Let that we need to do. Let me give you an example that I just heard. Tell me, tell me, tell me. The garden yep. had fig leaves that were big enough <laughs> to cover them. Is that right or wrong? That's exactly true. I don't know how big fig leaves usually are, but they were big down they there in the garden. Big, big leaves. <laughs> yes, they were. Absolutely. They were, they were very, you've got me speechless. They were very big indeed. <laughs> yes, they were. So <laughs> we they are given, given a surplus of prosperity, a surplus of prosperity. More than and, enough. And my confession over this ministry is we always have more than enough to do everything yes, that we good. need to do. Gloria, we, at two years ago, I put together a list of all of the, the infrastructure projects on this ministry that had to be done. Mm -hmm. They had to be done. We had a septic system out here that had to be updated. We had other areas of the ministry, the power plant, the, the water supply, um, air conditioning units. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I listed them all out and I put right beside it how much it would cost. The septic system itself, just hold on to your hat, is $2.2 million, $2.5 million. So I wrote that all out to the side and I just began declaring the word Praise of the Lord God. and the blessing. The blessing is working in this ministry. Right. The blessing is working in this ministry. So Gloria, those top 10 infrastructure projects, that total, it's close to 10 million that they total. Gloria, they're all funded. Praise God. Every one of those are funded. Thank you, Jesus. Now that's the blessing of the Lord. Oh yeah. That's the blessing of God. It was available all the time, wasn't it? It was available and all we had it. to do, all we had to do is call it in, call in the harvest. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do around here is just continually stand in faith and believe God because there's more. There's about 10 more. Actually, there are many, many more things that have to be done, but it encourages our faith to know that all of those, all of those that are on that list, those had to be done. I had to have air conditioning yeah. for the staff this summer, or it would have been really tough this last summer, or it'd be really tough. Mm -hmm. But there, there are in excess of 70 or so air conditioning units in one building. Isn't that amazing? It is. It is amazing. But the Lord is providing. Hallelujah. He's supplying because, the because the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. Yes, and this scripture right here is That's the scripture that we right stand here. on at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Mm -hmm. So a surplus in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, it is an amount that is more than the amount that mm -hmm. is needed. Isn't that good? Oh, I like that, George. The voice translation. Surplus. The voice translation. It says, "The eternal will you, the eternal will give you more than enough of every good thing." Mm -hmm. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's right. And that's the blessing of the that's Lord. Right. Well, after all, a <clears throat> uh, 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 Lord that puts gold streets in mm -hmm. his place. He's got, you know he's not chinchy. That's right. <laughs> he's got more than enough. He's got more, he's than, got more than, than enough. And he's willing to use it. He put gold streets in heaven. And I just sense right now there are some people that are watching us that, that say to themselves, I'll never be wealthy. I'll never have enough like them. Stop that right, right. now. Stop, stop, stop and start changing your language and yes. what you're saying and what you're speaking. 
God is no respecter of persons. If you keep saying it, it won't. You're right. It you'll never be wealthy. That's right. So that's turn that just, around. Uh, working against the way God works. It, you, you know, you, it, the Word says you can have a surplus of prosperity, more, That's than, more enough. than enough. That's what you need to do yep. is get in the Scripture and find the, uh, the blessing Scriptures <laughs> and the, that surplus of prosperity, mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, 11. Yep. That's a yep. good start. Yep. That's the Amplified Bible. Isn't it something? And we have to, we have to speak We, we never prospered like we should until we put our mouth to yeah. work. Yeah. And we we would have done it earlier, but we didn't know that was the key to the prosperity blessing. We just were new and You'll learned. never have it until you say it. So, you got to say it. Yeah, you you gotta gotta say, say. And you have to change. One thing that Terry and I have done over the years, and there are a number, you could probably find a list in my house of things we don't say <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Like, Why don't you do a book on I sh I sh what, what we don't say? <laughs> what we don't say. What well, one of the things we don't say is we can't afford it. We don't say that. That is a that is a faith destroying statement. Yeah. So we don't say that anymore. We can't afford it. We we believe for something. We stand in faith for it. But those words do not come out of my mouth. Well, we just can't afford that. We just can't afford that. No. And on things like that, you just have to find something else to say. Say the word. Speak the word yeah. instead. That's right. Declare the word of All the Lord. All things are possible to him that believes. That's good. I that's like that. All things are possible. That's just a bottom liner for all of it. That's a good one right there, Gloria. <laughs> I'll, I'll take yeah. that one. That's yeah. very good. Now, I'm going to quote Gloria Copeland here. Uh -oh. This is A.C. And it says, where does the surplus come from? It comes from the blessing working in your behalf. Mm -hmm. It works and it works and it works and it keeps working. Yes, it does. I like Praise that. God. I like that quote. That's good. In the message translation, it says, God will lavish you with good things. And the word lavish in the free dictionary to expend or give in great amounts or without limit. Isn't that good? The That's what he does. The, the, uh, uh, EXB Bible, which I'm trying to remember the name of what that stands for. The, ex the expanded Bible. That's what it is. The Lord will make you rich. That's what it says. The Lord yes, will make no you rich. To it. Nope. And first John three, one, see what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. So, we see that he wants to lavish upon this, this to us. And then the Bible in basic English, it says, the Lord will make you fertile in every good thing. Praise God. And the word fertile in the dictionary, producing a large amount of something. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Prosperity, <laughs> blessing. A large amount of a something. A large amount That's of something. Good. Fertile. I, Terry and I were watching a program the other night and it was, <laughs> it's interesting, Gloria. I think you might enjoy it. It's, it's on the history of country music. And oh. it's very interesting. It's fascinating. Well, I don't think I've seen that. It's very interesting. Anyway, we were watching this and one of, one of the families, one of the families connected to one of the country singers, um, his mother had 23 children. Oh, <laughs> Oh, and live to tell about it. <laughs> to tell about, and it showed a picture of all the. It's like a crowd, a oh. crowd, and so we're talking about fertile. Fertile. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yes, fertile. My goodness, I didn't know that was possible. And they actually showed a picture My of her. My mother had seven. That was a lot. That was a lot, but twenty-three, twenty-three. So that's fertile means producing a large amount of something. <laughs> Wow, that is big, George. Are you right. sure that's accurate? It's it's very accurate. Okay. It's very accurate. Go to the second page, Gloria. I don't know how much time we've got left. Oh, I've got three minutes left. Oh my goodness. Go, George. Okay, so in verse twelve it says, "The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, mm -hmm. the heaven to give rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless." all the work of your hand yeah. and you shall lend unto many nations and you shall not borrow. When it says the Lord will open to thee his good treasure, the word open in the Hebrew, it means throw wide open and let loose. Let, let loose. I like let loose. And he said he'll open his good treasure 
to you. <laughs> I got so excited. There's blueberries bouncing around. <laughs> got so he, the, he said the treasure, his good treasure, and a treasure, Gloria, in the Hebrew is a storehouse. It's an armory, yeah. Yeah. a depository, oh, a that's treasury, good, isn't it? a treasury, mm -hmm. and the Lord will open unto you his good treasure. That's the blessing. That's Praise the Garden of Eden. God. That's what belongs to us. My goodness, if we were to see a picture of the Garden of Eden, I think it would be unlike anything we've ever seen before. Oh, I'm sure the opulence of it, how much is in there. Mm -hmm. And he said, he'll bless the work of your hands. And this is interesting, Gloria. And the word work in the Hebrew, yeah. it actually means business. He'll bless your business, the work of your hands. Enterprise, your occupation. Enterprise, your occupation, the endeavors that you're involved in. Well, so that's a good confession. It, it is. He'll, he blesses the work of our hands. In Deuteronomy 39, in the New Living Translation, it says, the Lord your God will then make you successful in everything you do. And I want to hear a resounding, I receive yes, that. I receive, I receive that. it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The message translation, God will throw open the doors of his sky vaults. <laughs> it's a good That's one. That's good. And pour rain on your land on schedule and bless the work you take in hand. You will lend to many nations, but you yourself will have to, well, you, you yourself won't have to take out a loan. That's the message translation That's of right. that. And then Gloria, quote, Gloria Copeland, I'll quote you, Gloria. Oh, I'm right in there. There you are. A decision to be debt free takes you from what you can afford to what you desire. That's it the takes truth. the limits off. That's a true word. Isn't that something? She said it. She said it. <laughs> she she said believes it. it. And then finally, verses 13 through 14, and the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and you shall not be beneath. If you hearken to the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe, to do them, and you shall not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left or to go after other gods to serve That's them. That's right. Praise he God. He said he would make us glory the head and not the tail. And the head in the Hebrew is the top, the summit, the chief, the leader, the captain. Will be the head. And the tail is the end, the stump, and the bottom. I don't want to be the tail. I don't want to be the tail either. <laughs> God will throw open the doors of the sky vaults and pour rain on your land on schedule and bless the work Praise you, God. you take in hand. Praise you will God. lend to me, it me. See, that's... Right there on schedule. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, that's not right too on, late. Not right too on late. time. Right on time. Right on schedule. Yeah. You will lend to many nations, but you yourself won't have to take out a loan. A decision to be debt free takes you from what you can afford to what you desire. That's it right. takes the limits off. And it says down here in this C3, Proverbs 22, 7, the poor are always ruled over by the rich. So don't borrow and put yourself under their power. Wow. What a scripture. Now, where is that? That's down here at num number three. Number three. Three, number three. Yeah. The poor are always ruled over by the rich, right. so don't borrow and put yourself under their power. That's right. And then finally, the, the humash. Bible, so another one says by, uh, the borrow is subject. Subject. To the lender. Yep. Is that what the king said? That's says? what it says, subject. And then finally, this humash in the stone edition, God's blessing, listen to this, okay. will eliminate poverty and the need for loans. Now, where is that on my page? Oh, that's number four down there towards the bottom. God, God's blessing. Now, this is big for people. Let me see your God's side. blessing will eliminate poverty and the need for loans. Yep. In other words, you can pay cash. That's right. <laughs> Look what they're waving we're at you. We're out. What does that mean? <laughs> that means we're out of time. That means we're out to lunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we got the message. George and I'll be right back. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. So come together, worship together, and know this, that the greatest is yet to come. The value of prayer is more than you've ever known. And the times of prayer, the times of intercession have come to a place where it's no longer so much of the groaning, but the praising and the shouting for the victory has come. Hallelujah. Join us 
December 31st to ring in the new year at Eagle Mountain International Church in Newark, Texas, USA. April 2nd through the 4th, Kenneth Copeland welcomes you to the 2020 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri, USA. April 23rd through the 25th, join Kenneth Copeland at the Sacramento Victory Campaign at the Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento, California, USA. June 29th through July 4th, join Kenneth Copeland and many other speakers at the West Coast Believers Convention at the Ontario Convention Center in Ontario, California, USA. For more information, visit kcm.org slash events. It is offering day on the Believer's Voice of Victory. And first of all, Glory and I want to thank all of our partners and friends for the support yes. that you give to Kenneth Copeland Ministries, your faithful support in helping us get oh, this man. word of God out there. It, it is a blessing to us to be able to do these broadcasts, yes. to do everything that this ministry does with the faithful help of our partners. And Praise partners, yes. you need to know what belongs to you as a sower and a giver. And this scripture just jumped into my heart. This is 2 Corinthians. I don't have it on your sheet there, but it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And it says, He which sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. God loves a cheerful giver. Ha, ha, ha. He yeah. loves a cheerful giver. And here's the result of that. And this is what blesses me every time I read it. And it is, it's 2 Corinthians 9, 8 from the Amplified. And I wrote it in my Bible. It says, God is able to make all grace and every, every favor grace. and earthly blessing come to you so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance, abundance. for every good work and charitable donation. Say this after me, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As I sow my seed. As I sow my seed. I receive the benefits. I receive the benefits. I am furnished in abundance. I am furnished in abundance. For every good work. For every good work. In Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Gloria, thank you for letting me be on the oh, broadcast with you. Thank you for... I'd like to have you back six days a week. I will, <laughs> <laughs> I will come be with you again. I've enjoyed having you. It's oh, been great. Can I, I close it up today? I think Please we're out do. of time. Well, this is Gloria Copeland right here. Hello. And Pastor George Pearsons. And we're reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Today's Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast and study notes are available to you free as digital download on our website at kcm.org.uk. Keep your faith strong with the Word of God and step into a year of abundant harvest.